I've held world record speedrunning the Ratchet and Clank game since 2015. I run for the thrill of competition, but last year I set out to do something I've never done before. Take someone else's world record out of sheer spite. You might ask how me, Zem92, an otherwise normal person, could reach such a dark place. But I can promise you, it's all well deserved. So there's this guy, and out of respect for his identity, we're not going to use his real name. So let's just call him... Joe. Joe and I both have the same goal, to be acknowledged as the best Ratchet Runner in the world. However, with 16 games in the series, we've never actually run the same game in all the years we've been running. It was only a matter of time before we collided. We finally crossed pads last year while running a game called, and I'm not joking, Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty, a pirate-themed sequel to the PS3 game Tools of Destruction. You get it? Because pirates, booty, you get the joke. Now, normally, Booty is like the Age of Ultron of Ratchet games. It's two and a half hours long, leaves no real impact on the series at all, and leaves everyone wondering why it was made in the first place. The speedrun, however, cuts that down to a cool 20 minutes with some shortcuts and luck-based tricks. Joe had been the world record holder in Quest for Booty for a long time, and I was looking to challenge that. I hit the ground running hard. I would run the game on stream a few hours a day, then study and grind some more offline in voice calls with friends. Weeks rolled by and the game was harder than I thought, more annoying than I thought, and greener than I thought. It's weirdly green, for like, half the game. Eventually I beat Joe's record of 1911 with a time of 1905, marking my first ever Quest for Booty record. Oh my fucking god, I did it, yes! After that, I put the game aside. I was content with my achievement and frankly getting sick of the game. Among other issues, the final boss only gives you the right move one in three times, and I was tired of playing perfectly for 20 minutes just to lose one round of rock, paper, scissors. We're fast forwarding now five months to November 2021. Out of nowhere, Joe drops a bomb in the Ratchet Discord after almost half a year of silence. A brand new quest for booty trick. In Quest for Booty, the final boss fight takes you back to the first level of the game. So if you manage to move way out of bounds at the start of the game, for complicated computer programming reasons, the game gets confused, poops its pants, and sends you directly to the final boss, cutting the run from 20 minutes to 5. This completely changed the booty landscape by splitting the Quest for Booty run into two different categories, Any% percent, which uses the new trick, and any percent no debug trigger, which is the category that I got my 1905 in. While this was an amazing discovery, the kicker came at the very end of this message. Also, this. Frankly, I was floored. He tried to make the accomplishment seem so unimportant, like it was just an afterthought. Now in speedrunning, world records get beaten all the time, that's not really a big deal. But he eventually told us he had gotten the record all the way back in May, nearly a month before I got my 1905. He got world record and kept it secret from me for half a year. On one side, he created a new category only he knew how to run. On the other, he baited me into thinking I had the record so I'd stop running the category and then killed the game with a new strat. Now. Even I can admit this is kind of a Chad move. However, I also took it personally. What Joe did is bad, and it's even considered unethical in the world of speedrunning. To explain why, let's take a look at the world of regular running. You know, outside. One of the greatest, most impossible feats in running is the sub two hour marathon. For decades, the international community of elite distance runners made it their goal to break this two hour barrier. In 2019, runner Elliot Kipchoge ran a 1 hour, 59 minute, 40 second marathon on a special course in Vienna with dozens of other runners who helped him as pacemakers and supporters. Now let's be real here, speedrunning is not as cool as marathon running, but to succeed at speedrunning you need a community too. Everyone helps each other improve and it's only by working together that we can push the limits of the game. By definition, speedrunning requires public knowledge, since there are no eyewitnesses on the internet. 
by hiding strategies and records you hold the game back. Sure, you get a temporary advantage, but that doesn't mean anything because the instant you post the run, everyone else can see what you did. What Joe did was, in short, scummy for the community and very clearly designed to make me in particular look like a big idiot. I couldn't let this stand. The next day, I combed through his speedruns to find his best, most impressive world record. I landed on Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus, a game that Joe had poured his heart and soul into for many years. Joe had made me look dumb, and I was gonna make him feel like a tiny little baby man. I was gonna break his record. Nexus as a speed game is pretty straightforward. What you see is usually what you get. You can go out of bounds using this device, the Nightmare Box. You can charge around with the charge boots for a couple of planets. You can... long jump. We use this, this, and this to blow things up, and that's kind of it. The game isn't that hard to learn, but it's hard to master because there's a lot of precise movements you have to hit perfectly to go fast. After my first week running Nexus, I was already within a minute and a half of Joe's record of 20 minutes and 27 seconds. But in order to close that gap, I knew I needed to push the game even harder. An old school runner named Scrittler helped me out by teaching me an advanced technique called Nightmare Launching. When using the Nightmare Box, you can jump into the box just as the monster inside pops out, launching yourself forward across normally impassable gaps. It's also really fun to pretend that Ratchet's going boyoing. With my new boyoing method secured, I was ready to take down Joe. December 1st, 2021. The run starts out strong, and I get my best split ever on the first planet. Holy shit. Oh my god, dude, I'm finally getting good at this split. Let's go. And then I do it again on the second split. Oh my god. And the third. Holy shit. What the fuck, man? Bro, this is nuts. I annihilated five out of six of my best splits and still did decently on the one split I didn't get a best time on. I slammed the split bar at the end of the run and saw my final time. 2021, the best run in the world. Or at least, it would have been. Nearly six hours beforehand, Joe himself came out of the shadows of the 2015, also done offline. He was clearly trying to scare me off, just like last time. But with my confidence at an all-time high, I pressed on. A few days later, I had another good run. I once again got my fastest ever Nebulox 7. Ah, uh, I understand now. I was playing well, but some sloppy nightmare launches here on Psylocke lost me some time. By the time I finished Thram, the second to last planet, I had missed a few tricks and my best possible time was 2009 meaning I only had a measly five seconds of time I could afford to lose on the last planet. I then proceeded to play out of my mind. Oh my god, I almost didn't make it. I think that's it. Twenty ten, a full five seconds faster than Joe's record. GG baby. G motherfucking G. <laughs> Even though this was a great moment for me, I had something else on my mind. Joe could still be hiding another run that was even better than the 2015, just like he hid his precious booty from me. I decided to get a run so good, there was no way Joe could have a better one in his pocket. Four days later, I got my Christmas wish, closing out a 1958, the world's first sub-20 and into the Nexus, and I beat Joe to a milestone that he himself had been unable to achieve. What more? I ended up really loving Nexus. It's not the best or fastest Ratchet game, but it's really fun, and games are meant to be fun. Now you may be wondering what Joe's reaction was to all of this. 
You may be a bit disappointed to know that Joe was radio silent for months. But in a wonderful turn of events, Joe recently reached out to resolve our differences. Joe was going through a rough period in his life and he took his frustrations out on me in a moment of competitive intensity. No one is perfect, and I'm not blameless here either. I could have been a better community member to Joe and made him feel more welcomed. Regardless, we're starting to see eye to eye. Hopefully this video doesn't ruin that. With all this said, please don't be mean to Joe. I'm fully aware that it's not going to be hard to find out who he is. However, even if you do find out, treat him with the respect that he's earned through being one of the greatest ratchet runners of all time. 1958 is where the record stands today. I want to lower that someday, but right now I'm streaming all sorts of other PlayStation classics and even the occasional cookie clicker speedrun. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I would like to hit 100,000 subscribers before the year is over, but I can only do that with your help. Also, drop a comment and let me know about your favorite tale of petty revenge. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thank you for watching.